Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, back and ready to do a movie review this week. But before I get to that, I pretty much have a nearly two week break just doing the usual errands. You know, going out, getting something, you know, like some movies. Also posting some commercial breaks on my channel just to keep up, you know. I know, I've been saying this many times already. Uh, because my last review was the movie The Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt. That's available on Prime Video. Yeah, because Amazon joins in with Paramount and Skydance are distributed. But anyway, I just recently got a brand new Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max um, as a replacement to my iPhone 7. Because that's what T-Mobile have forced us to do. Um, well, I don't like switching phones that much because I want to keep for what I have currently until I'm ready for it. But we had to because you know T-Mobile had to shut us off, and if we don't, then we won't be able to call for emergencies and everything. Um, and of course, we do use it for emergencies, you know, for the families and everyone around. Sometimes we call friends, we, we call for utter, emer utter like, something important that we have to take care of, that sort of thing. So we don't want to have that problem. But therefore, it does have some brand new features. I mean, of course, you can put all the streaming apps that you want. And I do that a lot with uh, YouTube, some social media like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all. Um, I even put in the app for TuneIn Radio so I can listen to music on those stations that's available. Yeah. <laughs> I, I usually do the the usual stuff on there. But it's it's really cool. And you get to take pictures and, in 4K and even record videos in 4K too so it gives it a higher, sharper quality and enough to send it onto my social media page like Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> and of course, the usual errands of, you know, getting some movies at Dollar Tree, Best Buy, or any other places, or Goodwill. And, yeah, <laughs> I sometimes watch movies and TV shows on on my uh, Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K, or, or sometimes I just watch some movies on my physical media. Uh, that I got. <laughs> yeah. But I did went to see a movie last week. Yeah, I couldn't review it at that point on because I was very busy. So I figured, why not? Because this is the perfect timing for it. I went to see the movie Black Widow, which is the latest uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe with Scarlett Johansson and her solo film. I saw this movie in theaters at Cinemark in North Hollywood, but it's not only playing in theaters, it's playing on Disney Plus, the streaming service, uh, part of the premium access where you have to pay, you know, 30 bucks or, or 35 even, which led to a lawsuit recently. <laughs> uh, the star, Scarlett Johansson, reportedly had uh, sued Disney for a simultaneously release meaning that she's not getting more pay because it wasn't in her contract because I know Disney's always changing hands but just to think you know they weren't going to even put it on Disney Plus originally but that's because of the situation with the pandemic and they weren't so sure if feeders were going to be reopened until later on once they get the vaccine ready. That was the case, you know, they were struggling. And I know, I waited too long for this film to come out because I wanted to see it last year, and now it finally came. And it wasn't easy. Because I had to wait for this long to see it. And, for my opinion, I had to agree with Scarlett Johansson because apparently you know, I think a lot of actors deserve a lot of pay, even for a film that sat on the shelf for a while. 
I mean, if this is exactly what Disney had to deal with, then that's exactly what's going on nowadays. Because already um, we're having problems with Warner Brothers now, you know, on not handling their releases with films like In the Heights, uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy, even Mortal Kombat for that matter. And yeah, because of the whole idea. But I think even for them, at least they got to play movies for free if you're subscribed to HBO Max. But I'm just really worried about the way the studios are handling. I mean, I don't like the fact that now AMC is starting to agree with Warner Brothers to to have a 45-day theatrical window, you know, for their current releases coming up, even the upcoming ones for 2022. And I thought, oh come on, man, I don't want to deal with that because that's what happened last year with Universal when they had that problem, and you know how that didn't work out. Yeah, it's, I mean, this pandemic is just going way too strong, but it's really hurting everyone's uh, choices. And people don't want to get stuck with streaming just to find a movie that they're going to watch, especially in, in current times. Because that's going to be really tough for everyone, especially when they have to pay this much. That's not fair. And I know. <laughs> Life isn't fair. Um, but... Despite of what's going on, um, so far it's becoming the fifth highest grossing film this year. You know, it's doing what it can to make money by grossing free, about over 361 million worldwide. Um, and it did make 60 million through Disney Plus, as opposed to uh, all the others uh, through their box office records. So it's doing pretty well. But as long as it tries to keep up, then let's let's hope that you know we be able to get more movies to, to come up and show up, you know, for the course of another year or so. Because I don't want this to go on forever. I want this to, to stop. I want everything to go back to normal the way they are. And I hope we will when we find the, the miracle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um but with that aside, um, I know Lionsgate was originally going to do a solo film for Black Widow uh, back in 2004, but then Marvel eventually uh, somehow took over the idea um, in 2006. Yeah, David Heidner was going to attach to write and direct, who's of course the same man who worked on the X-Men movies and Watchmen too. Uh, so this could have been a whole different idea before Scarlett Johansson uh, got the choice. So anyway, uh, this movie takes place after the events of Captain America Civil War from 2016, uh, which this time Natasha Romanoff is on the run and forced to confront her past, which includes her father, mother, and her sister. Uh, the movie stars Scarlett Johansson, uh, Florence Pug, who I, I know she was in a movie, the later remake of Little Woman. Uh, she was also in Midsummer, the A24 film that's sort of a, pretty much like a, a different version of The Wicker Man. I haven't seen that, so I can't say. Um, she was also in the movie The Fighting With My Family. Yeah, WWE uh, type of story. Uh, David Harper, yes, who played Hooper from Stranger Things. Can't wait for season four to come out, uh, which is going to be out next year on Netflix. And I know he's been in other stuff too. Uh, Ulti Fagbeni, uh, Olga Karlenko. Uh, William Hurt, yes, William Hurt from Body Heat, um, as well as um, The Doctor, Eyewitness, and many other films he's done in his career. And I know he was in uh, The Incredible Hulk, yes, the, the 2008 film, which led to that, <laughs> for the MCU. Uh, Wade Winstone. 
And I know he was in films like uh, Edge of Darkness with Mel Gibson. He was in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, uh, among others. Uh, Rachel Weiss from Chain Reaction, uh, as well as um, The Constant Gardener. And um, several others. Lanny Samuel, Michelle Lee, Nana Bondell, uh, and uh, Oliver Richters. He has, of course, based on the Marvel comic. It's um, written by Eric Pearson, Jack Schaffer. And we also wrote uh, WandaVision for Disney Plus, and Ned Benson, and it's directed by Kate Shortland, an Australian uh, screenwriter, film and television director, as well as a TV writer. The movie began set in Ohio in 1995, which looks nothing like the year. It feels more like the 80s, at this rate, 87. How I could tell? Well, I just spotted the TV that's playing DuckTales, just showing the intro, while the entire family gathered around at the house, and you can actually spot a Pepsi can dating back to the 80s. Uh, you can even see the game board, the game of life, and other stuff. So it just feels nothing like the 90s. If that was the case, then DuckTales would have been on the Disney Channel. <laughs> I guess the director didn't know how to do their research properly. I mean, come on. At least Captain Marvel got it right with the 90s. I mean, Nine Inch Nails and all this other blockbuster and all this other stuff that's around at the time. Come on. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's one of my nitpicks I, I had with this film, but that's okay. Let's get on with the story. Uh, we meet super soldier Alexei uh, Shostakov who's played by David Harbour, along with Black Widow Melinda Bostokov, played by Rachel Rice, who work as Russian undercover agents, posing as a family with their daughters, uh, Natasha Romanoff and Yelena Bolova, who will soon be played by Skull Johansson and Florence Pug. They steal the S.H.I.E.L.D. intel and escape to Cuba, where their boss, General Dredkoff, played by Ray Winstone, had both uh, Natasha and Yelena to be taken into the Red Room for training. And as the years pass, during which Shostakov is being imprisoned in Russia, while Natasha defeats the S.H.I.E.L.D. after bombing Drakov's uh, Budapest, not Pesh, <laughs> as she refers to. Yeah, it's, it's a Russian thing, I guess. By apparently killing him and his young daughter, Antonia, or what it seems. By 2016, set during the events of Captain America's Civil War, she's now becoming a fugitive for violating the Sokovia Accords and escapes to the U.S. Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross, where she wants to flee to a safe house in Norway, receiving all these supplies by Rick Mason, who is played by Oti Fagbeni. Uh, meanwhile, Yelena had killed a, a rogue former Black Widow, but comes in contact with the synthetic gas that neutralized the Red Room's a chemical mind control agent, and soon she began to find out that all of her other agents and, and all the, the ones around the world, you know, as the Black Widows, are now being under control with this gas. So, Yelena had sent an antidote to Natasha, which led to a fight, hoping that she and Avengers can free the other widows around by going into hiding. And that's where somehow Natasha's being chased by this mysterious uh, Winter Soldier that was attacking her earlier, but now she's under attack uh, with both of them involved. So she's unknowingly driving with all the vials in her car, and Red, Red Room agent Taskmaster's was that's what it's and that's where we get to meet this mysterious uh, agent named Taskmaster that Red Room had sent to, to go after 
Latasha and then later went after Belova because they actually met <laughs> earlier um, while she was in Norway and then now they're going all the way down there to Budapest to go after her. So she escapes from Taskmaster and realizes that the vows that came from Budapest. She finds um, Yelena who reveals that Drakov is alive and the Red Room is still active. So the Black Riddles and Taskmaster are starting to attack them you know, one by one. Natasha and Yelena had evade them by meeting with Mason who supplies them with the helicopter. And I know there's also a lot of chit chats going around. Like, for example, you know, Yelena always kept calling Natasha a poser because, <laughs> you know, she's actually, you know, making fun of her posing that she was doing. <laughs> I mean, later on, she even says, well, that's disgusting. Okay. Well, therefore, both of them were about to uh, have Shosatov uh, break out of prison. Yeah, while well, she he was just going around, you know, arm wrestling with all the other criminals, which actually broke the tall guy uh, arm out. I mean, wow, that was just <laughs> very gross. So they they try to um, get him out of there as soon as they can, but of course they got to run in with all the other criminals and and the widows and all the others and they so later once they got him out of there they direct them to Ostakov who lives on a farm outside of St. Petersburg yeah that's where she spotted a uh, a pig yeah, or hog whatever you like to call it where this hog is going under control you know, by uh, technology so you can pretty much do anything with this hog so there she was refining the chemical mind control process to use on the widows. And Bostikov alerts Drakov and his agents arrive to take him, but then Natasha had convinced um, Melinda, uh, Melinda that to help him by using the pair use of a face mask technology, you know, pretty much in disguise, to switch places to where you are. Yeah, so that's like the valuable secret here. So that way they can be able to stop uh, Draco, who had put the technology in her head, and also because we now we find out the reveal of Taskmaster. And now it's up to Natasha, along with Yelena, Alexei, and Melinda, to go after these guys before it's too late. Yeah. Which I know, this is going to be a long winding road to to stop them and hoping to get everyone free as possible so it's a very well done um, superhero film no doubt has incredible action scenes I mean the chase scene going all the way to Budapest that's going straight into the subway was amazing <laughs> but it was crazy you know, when, when they're being chased down by this uh, mysterious uh, taskmaster. Uh, Scarlett Johansson did a great job playing Natasha and Black Widow. Um, Florence Pug, on the other hand, is just hilarious, perfect. Yeah, given a Russian accent, well, same goes with David Harbour and, and um, Rachel Weiss. You know, all got Russian accents except for... Scarlet, but I would imagine if she did use an accent too. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah, because they were black clothes too. But they were great. Um, I guess I can also see some great chemistry, you know, as sisters. You know, they since you know they haven't seen them in in such a long time. They haven't spoke to each other for a long time. You know, they were separated, but now they came back kind of wasn't getting along at first but that's what led to this whole uh, I guess a bit of a sibling rivalry between the two for a while <laughs> but I know they had to do with their own ideas and also it led to a lot of family conflict um, 
with their mother and their father. I wish that um, David Harbour's character, Alexei, you know, which he was known as the Red Guardian, yeah, I forgot to mention that, which he, it was basically a super soldier counterpart to Captain America, so I guess you could probably say he's pretty much uh, Captain Russian, because um, it was a because he's trying to do his best as a father figure. I, I mean, he had done a lot of mistakes. But there was... There's not enough of him, though. And that's what bothers me a, a little bit. I mean, he gets beat up a lot, too. Like, just when he was about to get ready to fight against the Taskmaster, he just gets totally beat up a lot. And that's... Come on, man. And then he kind of runs around like, it, like it's a joke. And I know... It's like, geez, I mean, have some respect for this guy, okay? You know, you did something wrong, he'll make it up for it, okay? <laughs> that, really, man, I don't know. I, mean, I, blame, I blame the writing for that. But, um, uh, Rachel Rice was also very good, too. Um, but I figured because, you know, she's doing her best to actually try to, you know, to come up with some latest technologies and hoping to save everyone and I know that they were going for another um, I guess they were also going for another I mean even as a scientist I know she was trying to you know she doesn't have much of a, a personality or no sense of humor but that's kind of interesting um, but she did fun they're all good um, but all the actors were great. I mean, even the villain, the even the villain Drake Koff, played by Ray Winstone. I mean, this, which even though this is the kind of general that they have to go for, because he's the one who's the mastermind who controls all the the Black Widows around the world. After what was happening, yeah. and all the attacks going around. And also led to all the other wars that were happening. I mean, all the danger and the, all the lives of all the women around and, and all that. That that sort of thing. So it's great, great story. Um, but I know <laughs> it could have been better. But that's fine because I I really admired it. It's the best we had to offer for for Marvel. Um, they got a lot of great music, um, I, I guess they were going to get, uh, Alexandri, uh, the Platt, where she was going to compose, which she was going to compose some music, but then they got Lawrence about to take over, and I guess they also had some other songs, uh, like for example, they had a cover version of Nirvana's Smell Like Teen Spirit by... Think of Anger with Malia J. That's shown in the opening credits. Um, they even used the song American Pie by Don McLean. Yeah, you know that song. Uh, and even uh, Saya's Cheap Thrills to join. Yeah, that's a lot. Uh, so they... So, of course... Uh, there's the movie's gonna come out on Blu-ray. Uh, the the movie's already gonna come out on Blu-ray pretty soon too. It's September 14th and 4K as well and DVD. So which soon it'll, it'll made available by October 6th <laughs> on Disney Plus. And hey, I know they're trying to fight against for what they're doing. So <laughs> okay. Well. At least I finally got to see it. That's all it matters. So that's Black Widow. And I give the movie four stars. I'm Josephine Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.